short story idea, impulse capture, 8.50 a.m. Sunday, January 8th, 2023. Working title, Sleep Study. With a heavy dash of satirical wink and a nod homage ingredients referencing other um, deep sci-fi study environmental procedural shows such as Stranger Things, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the clinical space in which Eleven is brought up, um, and Maniac, or is it Maniac, Manic? Um, I forget the names of the actors, but I can see their faces, but the one where two, it's a, you know, a guy and a girl and they go into a study about, I think some sort of new anti-depression, some sort of emotional regulation situation thing. And it's wild and delirious. <clears throat> Maybe even a little bit of fire starter, <laughs> that sort of thing. Oh, what's the other one that Stephen King did? The one where everyone's trying to quit smoking. I don't know if it was ever made into a movie. I think it was. But I don't I don't remember if I ever saw the movie. I think I read the book. I know I read the book. Um, there's a slim, like, novella. I think it's a small book. Maybe it's a short story. Um, about a bunch of people in a clinical study space where, like, extreme things are done all in the service of them, like, quitting smoking. And it's all, like, really grossly horrific. And it's like, what? Anyways. <clears throat> No infringement is implied. I'm just acknowledging that these are obvious um, literary in in the sort of art term, termed art sense, literary influences or um, ingredients, um, things that I, I invariably and inevitably would have to acknowledge uh, impacted me one way or the other, indirectly or directly. Um, I don't have any known schemes to steal from except I actually that's not entirely true I was just having an image like a conversation with myself about whether or not theoretically and whether or not I should write like a short story about this conversation or this thing happening in in the in the fictional future like some production um, but a, a, of acquiring like 3d wire mesh models of um, like mock you know either previs or actual special effects um, um, uh, augmented reality uh, depictions of settings used in a particular production or another. Because <clears throat> I was thinking, as I was waiting for all the devices to like boot up and be ready to capture, I was thinking about how um, it would be interesting to visually reference, say, for example, the day, the playroom that Eleven goes into and has those weird experiences and... Um, I remember one particular instance in which, oh, the one in which she's trying to leave. And no matter where she goes, no matter what combination of doors she chooses, she always ends up back in the playroom. I was thinking of like, you know, it'd be neat to borrow, uh, to recreate either physically or use CGI to like borrow that set and then kind of homage that sequence. But, you know, in a completely different way, using completely different characters. Um, again, no infringement is implied. I just think it'd be awesome. Uh, to do that sort of thing, to create that sort of thing consciously, like planning to do it from the ground up. Something they would go into, like, you know, my interruption um, creator, uh, like, I guess I call them pre -vis flashbacks. But at any rate, uh, the short story entitled Sleep Study. For some reason, study is in all caps. Uh, I saw a vision. I'm not. I'm, I'm going to type some of what I say. I'm going to read some of what I type, etc. Um, I was sitting outside first thing in the morning, unsure of what to do next, you know, how to start my day in terms of creating content. And then I had this image. I, I got the title, Sleep Study, um, in part because I have chronic insomnia. And I think I was just sort of wistfully pondering my own insomnia. Oh, yeah, I was actually thinking about how 
I'm embarrassed to acknowledge, and I think this would be something for one of the characters to have as like backstory. I'm embarrassed to acknowledge that I for for several years I had my medicinal cannabis license, and it was I was honest and sincere about it. Um, but like many, I unfortunately let it lapse when um, recreational cannabis was um, authorized here in my state. In large part because of cost convenience, like it was just one less lump sum of money that I had to try and scrape together living, you know, on a shoestring, humble AF budget. Uh, and then, you know, I lived for uh, for several years with the hope of like, well, next year I'll pick it back up again because I'm sincere and earnest in, in, in my in my conviction uh, I dare, I kind of loathe to call it a belief, but my conviction that cannabis is indeed medicine um, and that cannabis strains are sophisticated and nuanced. So it's not just one medicine. It can be many kinds of medicine. Um, and uh, in my belief, because I, it, I can't describe it any other way, that it is also spiritually healing as well as, you know, ben has as well as having f measurable physical, you know, uh, biochemical benefits, it's spiritually soothing and um and perhaps empowering in some ways um or or enlightening um but i you know have long as as the human creature is wont to be the combination of convenience and sort of path of least resistance has left me um perpetually uh failing to to return to that's having that status of being you know um of having gone to the doctor once a year and done my little little interview and paid my license fee um, in order to um, not only, like, uh, reserve, ascertain the right, but stand up and be counted as someone that considers um, my direct personal relationship with cannabis to be, if not in whole, in part medicinal. Um, if not in part in whole. Um I don't know why the words came out backwards like that in terms of the usual phrasing of that term, but there you go. So backstory blurb, which I didn't even bother to try and capture in any way, shape, or form, typing wise. Um, I'm trying to like warm up towards a log line, which is of course one of the greatest challenges that writers have um, throughout history in the process of creating it. When do you come up with a log line? Some people don't come up to the log line and, and, you know, a third party does on the way of packaging the movie out to, to, to get it to market. Um, but a log line is many, many a book writing book will tell you is critically important, um, for an author to consider using as a, as a critical analysis tool because it should contain, define, and sort of narrate the vision of the piece uh, in some elegant and simple one or two sentence kind of way. And I had a vision sitting outside of, um, a character, a pair of characters sort of being brought together under the, the confluence of circumstances that they find themselves after kind of both getting tricked into participating in a less than, um, a squeaky clean feeling uh, sleep study, a, a clinical study about you know uh, neurological process, processes and disruptions of sleep, uh, and I'm now okay. Um, I'm sort of cobbling together the first attempt at a at a log line here. Thank you for joining. Whoa! I almost drowned in my coffee. Hands up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Real raw, radically unscripted. Thank you for joining me for this uh, Wattpad Writers Workshop behind the scenes audio blog about uh, you know me trying to write the visionary uh, sci-fi uh, multifaceted adventure series that is trapped in my head. 
All right, here we go. Quote, an unlikely pair of something, something. And I don't want to say uh, star-crossed lovers, but I kind of want to say star-crossed lovers. I don't have what that phrasing is. An unlikely pair of blah, blah, blah are brought together by fate and circumstances as they um, as they navigate the surreal The surreal landscapes, this may be a bit cliche, the surreal landscapes of their dreams. And also, I can never spell the word there. Ugh. What is wrong with me? Um, it's like hardwired in. It's some, it's some remnant of like being really caught up in, in feeling very dyslexic. Uh, that's a whole other backstory blurb about my, my youth. Okay. So, log line cobbling. An unlikely pair of star-crossed lovers, working pair, working descriptor phrase, are brought together by fate and circumstances as they navigate the surreal landscapes of their dreams, of their wildest dreams, of their... The surreal, or should I say surrealist? No, that's a bit too... It takes it too heady. It's heady enough that it's surreal. The surreal landscapes, or landscape, landscape... The surreal landscape of their dreams I don't want to use I, for some reason the word trapped but th th uh, it already feels too clunky Uh, uh, um, so the vision I had, let's leave that for now. Let me just talk for a minute. Um, the vision I had was sort of some, an, an intake interview or where this thing about insomnia and how cannabis is the only supplement, if we want to use that term creatively, um, that has ever helped me in consistently in a, it, it's been consistently um, inconsistent because it's not always uh, certain strains don't always help as much as other strains do. And in fact, certain strains sort of amplify um, the opposite state of, of, of mind and, uh, and therefore I get caught up in do, doing things that prevent me from going to sleep, like being creative or enjoying, uh, you know, um, creative thinking, if, if, for lack of a better term. Um, but I digress. It's one of the few substances, um, if we want to also, you know, you know, phrase it that way, one of the few substances that I could rely on to, to, to consistently enough help me manage my, my insomnia in such a way that I can get regular enough sleep. Um, whereas completely devoid of cannabis in my life, my insomnia will rear its ugly head as it pleases, whenever it wants, and, and I have little to no recourse. Um, and I've tried a little bit of everything, right? Like, it's not like I haven't tried. So anyways, that sort of conversation, I don't know, I got a little bit too caught up in describing all that. Um, and then, you know, getting swept up in a, a strange, um, clinical bureaucracy of involving, of being involved, uh, in, in, um, in sleep studies. And, uh, and of course, you know, we can have a lot of incorrect assumptions about what that may or may not be like, but I specifically saw sort of two things. One, that there has to be a sequence wherein um, 
our our main one of our main characters because I see a male and a female character of approximately the same age in their you know late twenties early thirties, uh, you know struggling professionals dealing with insomnia each in their own way, um, and after having been approved for being part of the study in a sort of preliminary um, baseline phase of of passive data collection. Uh, all participants are uh, assigned like a monitoring device, which which um, which captures their you know biometrics um, as they sleep. And there was some sort of technical issue pertaining to the the accuracy and the sort of like consistency of the data keeping or the track the, the record kept by the device. Um, the clinicians all presumed that this subject, um, that this character must have, uh, interrupted the device for some reason, either gotten up and detached themselves abruptly from the device without following the proper protocol. But they also sort of qu uh, quizzically puzzled over that because if he did so, he did that sleepwalking because according to the data, he was sound asleep. Um, and th the, just the, there's just a gap, right? Like the device completely failed to work um, for like a an hour and thirty minute period, something like that in the middle of the night um, every night, uh, and, and that is, in part of his intake he gets sort of cross examined about this, and he pleads innocence and ignorance. Has no idea what they're talking about. Um, has no recollection of any. Um, you know, there was either the insomnia as recorded, or there was the regular sleep as recorded, and there was no. No episodes of, like, smack dab in the middle of the sleep period, you know, getting up and doing anything. Uh, and and he denounces any claim, you know, it's like, no, no, I, you know, he refuses to, uh, that he's, uh, you know, completely denies any tampering with the device. Which is where the clinicians have basically gotten to. Now, I was thinking there must, there, there must be for, for, for sort of syncopation's sake, in terms of, like, you know, the, the weird, uh, you know, supernatural things that are going to occur it, later on in the story, something similar, equivalent, but, but different, um, that happened to the, to the female subjects, uh, uh, device, but they didn't elicit so much suspicion. It was there and it was questioned, but it was also sort of just like presumed to be an innocent technical error. And, and the, the sort of imagery I got there was that, um, Similarly, in her sleep pattern for various nights in a consistently weird pattern, there was a period of an hour and a half or so in which all of her um, information was just blown out. As opposed to the device sort of just being completely offline and there being zero um, activity, it was as if you know everything was just peaked and unable to, to accurately read anything and just blown to the top. So it was just, if you're looking at a graph, with some sort of waveform or something scribbling going, you know, traveling from left to right, like a, like, um, you know, the way a lie detector might print out or something. Uh, it just, the needles just all, you know, the, the, the line and the needles just all the way up to the top and registering a meaningless, you know, off the page board in your very edge of the, of the printable area, just bleeding right off the page kind of thing. Um, and then it would res reset and have a weird, you know, moment of like, of, of turbulence and then return to normal. Um, again, something that she, the, as, as, as someone that was questioned about it, pleaded complete and total lack of knowledge and it's like not even understanding what they meant by it. Um, and that she'd never noticed any such thing, blah, 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 but she just sort of, you know, both characters are sort of doing this study begrudgingly. Um, now, the coral, the, there's a, a second thing that correlates in once we get into the the sort of present tense setting of the of these characters being deep into the uh, the study process at the you know the deep weird secretive underground location which does which there's here's a reference that i didn't think of earlier um which i think may be new coming off the tongue now fresh so there's a little bit of like you know um Raccoon City from Umbrella Corporation of this in there, but, you know, not we're not going there with, you know, biomutant monsters or anything. 
Um, at least I don't think so. Uh, but uh, there has to be like a buildup in sort of the first, in the in the, the meaty, meatiest parts of the first or second act. This is early on in the story, but deep enough that we've kind of, you know, really built into it. And we feel like, okay, now we know this world that they're in, um, which I need to go back and backfill a little bit here in terms of what I'm sharing. Um, there has to be a moment individually for each of the characters and um, Where uh, individually, and then of course in a bigger, more pronounced, more dramatic way. Sorry, I just typed something that's completely separate from this thought, and I don't want to go off and get distracted. Um, where the system gets blown. Okay, let me let me let me restart. I, I know this must be confusing for anyone following along. So, device system failures are echoed, and in a bigger, more 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 mysterious, more like ooh, ooh scary moment kind of way later on in this this mo this peak moment either late in act one or very very beginning of act two it might be sort of i i think it most it most appropriately it might be the sort of the the final beat um or the build you know the the big sort of dramatic moment that then kind of ends the a act one yeah uh and, and and then is the mystery that's addressed at the beginning of act two um and the and that is this uh Let's take. Let's think of it individually in terms of with the with the, start with the female character. She's in her private room. She's very isolated. She's she's had um, let's say a, a two night jag of insomnia, so she hasn't slept for two whole days. Right? She's napped and snoozed a little bit, but like so light that it you know was meaningless and and, and then was, um, didn't really get into any REM sleep. Didn't experience any you know, interesting dream events or anything like that. Um, but now she's, she is, uh, sort of her, her body kind of taps out and she's, she's, um, succumbed to sleep finally. And she's been sleeping for X period amount of time. And, uh, you know, all her, the team monitoring her has kind of raised a sort of attention, attenuation plateau level. And they, they sort of like, okay, She's probably going to sleep for a while. We can kind of stand down from hyperattention and start to sort of be normal people and do weird things and, you know, add to the mystery of, of what, hey, what the fuck is really going on. And just when we're getting caught up in that world of, of getting to know those people and those characters and start to get exposed to some of like, you know, questioning those motivations and, and, you know, getting, getting, read into some of the extenuating circumstances in terms of like what is this bureaucracy of of pseudoscience that's being conducted here um we it all gets interrupted because she has one of these peak moments like uh everything's sort of set to a dark nighttime dim lit mode you know uh, because they are all working literally overnight and it is you know some weird She's in a, oh, and in the study, she's in a sort of like Vegas hotel room. Um, like you, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. You control the lighting kind of space. Um, and, uh, and so her room, her quarters are set to sort of like dim. Uh, she had been awake and doing stuff and puttering around with whatever, you know, objects and mundane things she's got available to her. And I was debating in my head what kind of things. I was like, screens? No, probably no screens. But maybe, uh, you know, early in the first few days, they had access to their screens and or screens uh, surrogates in order to sort of like take a baseline measurement of what their normal, every, you know, a step removed from their normal, normal everyday life was like and how much, you know, to measure the impact of having screens at your disposal with no... No limitations, no boundaries. And then maybe a few days testing phase where they're like, now we got limitations and boundaries. Like, you can't use the screens for two hours before you decide to, you know, before your quote unquote bedtime, et cetera. But now we're like in the middle phase where the screens have been stripped away. She's gone through some, a period of insomnia. 
she's finally fallen asleep and the people finally sort of like stood down from high alert and then boom something's going on and every device first in her room but then also in like the 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 observational control rooms both like embedded in the walls behind two-way mirrors and in whatever sort of more relate, uh, remote headquarters location that is communicating with them because there's sort of like a you guys you know there's a sort of like a a base uh headquarters sort of command center and the immediate like uh team that's observing you know because there's multiple teams observing everyone that's involved in all of the studies so there's a lot of communicating back and forth in that sort of way um and we'll play with that later on um oh and here's a Another reference homage ingredient would be uh, a, The Cabin in the Woods, the postmodern horror story where they like, you know, flip the genre sort of inside out. And there's a lot of this like what is sci fi, like people running the, the secret proceedings, that, you know, that everyone else that we see inside of the story don't have any idea about. Um, and of course, uh, much more recently, probably Kant and I uh, has got some, some influence here. Um, the, Kore the the Korean sensation, what the fuck was it called? Something game show, the game show. You know the game show, the the bloody death blood match game show. Not battle royale, although battle royale has its fundamental artistic influences broader overall to the Zepoverse, especially to anything Guntopia related. But here I'm thinking of S the Squid Game. Is that what it was called? Ugh, my brain is so um, not great at preserving titles and names but I digress and so there's this moment this build up and there's this sort of like it has to be kind of like when the dinosaurs you know footsteps are like oh it grabs people by surprise and everything goes from sort of normal to like dead silent to like panic response um and it's all about like the lighting and the po it's a power surge right she's the power source and somehow all the instruments, all the light bulbs, all the widgets, anything and everything that would be impacted starts going haywire and it builds in an impossible build until just like everything blows out. Um, and, you know, and sparks fly and, and we have a sort of like, what's that moment where the guy hits the bat and, and, he, and he blows out the, um, the old school... Uh, uh, lighting things that's that baseball movie but anyways some sort of melodramatic crazy you know a fountain of sparking um that could get like fire emergency crazy level and then everything sort of um browns out never it never blacks out because that's sort of we steal the thunder of the of the boys event but kind of browns out and then flutters back into near normal but also sort of messed up level of like, oh God, some things are on the fritz, but everything's sort of stabilizing back to normal. And some of the control room has got to have a little bit of a Star Trek flavor, you know, like old Captain Kirk style. And like a little bit of a wink and a nod to like, you know, scientists clearly standing around doing nothing in front of computers that are obviously, you know, just blinking lights and aren't doing anything. <laughs> but, but also not so fake that it feels really cheesy fake. Um, and then she sleeps for a whole long period of time. And it's, and so we're left with this like, ooh, ah, shock and awe moment amongst the clinicians and, and the, the bureaucrats and, the, and managers and the technicians and all the people part, that are part of the bureaucracy of the study trying to figure out like what just happened. And then we have um, the similar event um, for the male character, um, which would have the same sort of bizarre sort of, oh, you know, he's been um, having his own insomniatic disruptive episode and now he's finally like just conked out. He's crashed out and, and the staff observing him have been keenly on edge until that threshold is sort of like, oh, all right, we're done. We're going to, you know, gather around. We're going to kind of break from, uh, from hyperattention. We're going to stand down from from staring at him consistently, and we're just gonna, gonna go about some humdrum, you know, more relaxed and groovy, casual office chit-chat business, you know, a little bit of water cooler talk, a little bit of lunch breaks, a little bit of, 
mystery and intrigue about interpersonal character stuff. And then, kaboom, this other thing where it, 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 this is the same sort of like dramatic, like what the fuck is going on sort of build up. But then instead of it being a super bright out where everything's just super on and bright and uh, blah for a while, it's like the opposite. It like maybe surges up a little bit for a hot second, but then it's all about like, boom, it gets plunged into like a spooky, like maybe section by section, machine by machine or breaker by breaker. Um, everything's sort of pulled into darkness, right? So it's got to be similar but different. Um, where instead of it's this, it, this build until the screen or you know the 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 field of view of anybody in the room in the girls' event would go f uh, like into like overexposure, where you know people and things start becoming impossible to see because there's so much light and the lens flare combined with the just overwhelming white uh, out that's happening. Uh, renders just the, a, a big blaringly white um, and we sit in that you know to have a moment and then we do we know we explore what the soundscape impact is of just a, a pure glowing white screen and then it's like intense sound um, and chatter so conversely for the boy um, there's got to be this dramatic buildup of ominous uh, spiking of energies and whatnot but then it's like it's like the boy is a black hole that's like slowly expanding and growing in power and devouring any um, immediate output of power so that that thing is rendered dark. And then like the, the, the pit of darkness or the, the you know, and there's also sort of like a, apparently as everyone stares in bemusement at him, there's like a physically, locally tangible, like mist of darkness that's, that's seemingly a, without being too cheesily like um cgi it's got to be spooky sort of like oh why aren't my eyes working you know it's got to be like this um really really velvety like it's not there i don't want to see a black cloud swirling and reaching out into the i want to see like void you know like there's an absence that just is growing with every like wave of boom you know and you know that sound of like the com electronic components are offline there's like this Un, you know, this hum and drum of like the machines failing and like, you know, electric, electric components like unspooling or whatever. Um, and then that's a purely made up technical term. But also there's like the resonant frequency of this pit of darkness, this void, this velvety black emptiness that's like consuming all the energy that's emanating away out from this body in this boy's body in every direction. Um, and, uh, you know, building to the ultimate, like, black screen and another moment where it's just sound design. Um, and there's, you know, surrealist supernatural sounds mixed in with the chatter of, of people in their fear and things happening. Something I didn't really touch on with the previous moment, but there's got to be, like, horror sounds and, and, and uh, you know, the emoting of fear and, and, and some forms of of shock or anguish and something. And then eventually some sort of crescendo of that. So that in, in, I'm not really clear on the duration of the timing, but it, it, it's got a peak in its, in its craziness. And there must be some echoing of like the sound where maybe the sound becomes all incredibly muted, except for the most eerie of fundamental sounds. That is the core of the experience. You know, what is the sound of this darkness that we've been thrown into? And conversely, for the for the girl scene, what is the sound of this of this blinding white golden whiteness that we've been, uh, you know, bleached by, um, or or you know, drowned out and completely blotted out by? And then, kaboom! You know, we, we're brought back into reality, each in a sort of like um, maybe with a bit of like uh, shell shock, you know, bullet cling in the ear sort of sound. Uh, that ringing that it's been done really great. Like one of my favorite moments is at the very end of Fight Club, you know, that like, ow, it should almost feel like you think it really happened in your ear, like your ear, ear is actually ringing. And it's, those are horrible because they're probably causing ear damage, hearing damage, but um, when really effectively done, they're really awesome sound effects, I think. Um, and so each sort of uniquely their own, the light and the, and the, and the anti-light, 
the Dark Void sort of version. And then we have um, a shattered and and disheveled, disheveled and shocked and like stunned and like, you know, uh, flabbergasted, speechless pair of teams and, and a, a little bit less, still very disoriented, very confused crew back in headquarters that, you know, are the first to break the silence in, in both instances and start, at, you know, demanding answers and, and, you know, giving, like, get us, the, what's the data say? What's going on? Like, what, what did you guys see? What did you experience? What's going on? What are they doing? What are the kids? We're well, not kids, but what are, what are the subjects up to now? Um, and the, each of the teams, you know, clearly like, the, like, unable to speak, don't know what to say, um, and we get to in each of the instances some some breaking of the silence within that bubble of 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 awe or of shock and awe um, as they observe something in the the each of the um, um, the subjects living quarters you know through their observational panels um, that sort of like is the last like jolt of like bah! oh bah, what the um, and then, of course, it's like something banal. It's not. It's not as spooky as as it's imagined. Um, and you know, transition to an, a, another scene where we sort of um, reset the narrative, and we're we're exploring a, a really sort of simple, sweet moment um, where these two characters, maybe in their very first, second, or third day of having been you know of having gone through the intake procedures and getting set up and kind of um, established in their new living quarters uh and now sort of you know trying to get get on with the with the day to day um you know things and are in a shared uh living space cafeteria sort of you know um uh recreation lounge where there's TVs and, and maybe some pool tables or whatever and everyone's sitting there in their little clinical, I'm a patient in a, a lab study um, kind of, you know, uh, sh hospital gown and smock and robe and f weird funky slippers. And, and, and you know, everything's antise antiseptic in this design. And um, we have the moment, the first moment where these two characters, um, and maybe we've seen a little bit of intake backstory uh, uh, leading up to all this during the, the beginnings of Act One and, and into, uh, you know, maybe a, as a break between the, uh, uh, the the stories of these two weird energy episodes for each of them, where they're like conscious of each other. You know, they're like they've they, they've locked eyes before, but they haven't met. And here at lunch or or breakfast or something, um, in, after some awkward incident between unknown other you know patients behaving oddly with each other they they sort of like lock eyes and then realize they're like oh um and I, as they're both on their way to pick a table um it, it, we should we should maybe sort of sit together you know, and they have a, a sort of like awkward um conversation negotiating like yeah yeah let's 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 why don't you and i sit together and then they sit and and we can have that sort of introduction moment um, where we we get each of their uh, of their you know this is who I am yeah nice this is who I I perceive you to be and uh, and yeah we we both kind of um, connect you know as opposed to with anybody else I guess so here we are now we we've got someone to talk to you're you're my person to talk to in this weird confusing place. Enough so that it builds to a, a moment of like, all right, let's really, let's get real. Isn't something a little bit off here? Isn't something a little bit strange? Um, so that they can then, you know, build confidence and and eventually, uh, it, later on, probably in Act 3, uh, build towards the sort of... Um, conclusion that they've got to try to bust out you know it's like it's it's time to break out of here or else things are going to get a little too weird before things get too weird and too bizarre um 
for now, I think that's about it. I'm going to probably try and switch gears and type without having the tape recorder running. That didn't really work for me, I realized, because my hands compete with my mouth, and my mouth wants to talk about the stuff that's in my head. And my hands are either like, well, if we start typing about it, it's going to go a different way. And um, um, But I'm going to keep experimenting with this with these two modalities to see if we can get them to flow in interesting ways. So I'm going to switch gears and focus on just typing for a while after a brief break. And uh, I think there's more to come about this, as I can, I already sense, a, you know, act one, act two, leading into a sort of desperate, we feel cornered enough that like, we are going to seriously talk about breaking out of here, um, cliffhanger, to the end of act three, and then what the fuck happens in act four. Um, for those of you who may be listening to this at some point in the future as some part of a, a podcast or, or live stream, thank you very much for your support. Um, and yeah, I look forward to sharing more of this story with you. And please do follow up by reading its rough draft and final forms over on Wattpad. Until next time, I've been your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zabo.